Hello, everyone, and welcome to the EVN Disrupt podcast. My name is Nujat Saturyan, and I'm the editor of the tech section here at EVN Report. My guest this week is Gevark Bohosyan, the founder and head of ReArmenia. ReArmenia is a collaboration platform that enables projects in Armenia to find experts from the global Armenian network to advise and assist with their implementation, as well as conduct fundraising. Thank you for listening. Gevark, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much for having me here. So we're recording this in mid-October. Uh, most recent events happened about a month ago now. Artsakh was completely ethnically cleansed of its Armenian population. I'm glad to have you here to t- speak about the subject specifically because one, your initiative, Re-Armenia, was started after the war with the intention and the mission of serving as a platform where Armenians and, and non-Armenians from around the world can collaborate on projects that are meaningful to Armenia's development, specifically in, in Armenia. And also, you were living in Artsakh. Uh, you moved to Artsakh at some point in 2022, if I remember correctly. Yes, yeah, last year. You weren't there during the, the blockade. You had come to Yerevan. I remember seeing you uh, a few weeks after it started. Tell me a little bit about how your thinking has changed, if it's changed at all, after all of these events. Um with your overall mission and what you think um, people like yourself, people who are quote-unquote doers, um, how they need to think about this moving forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. It was really sophisticated question. <laughs> so let's go <laughs> uh, one, uh, I mean, step by step. So the first thing, Najdejan, I wanted to say that um, overall our mission stays the same. And um, basically every day we're coming closer and closer uh, to the understanding how important is this mission. Actually, uh, just to uh, recap, I mean, right after the 44-day war, um, once more we understood that uh, our unity has no uh, alternative, actually. Uh, And, I mean, you know, so the first threat for our enemies is our unity. So the fir- because of that, the first target of our enemies is our unity. And the first step that they're taking, I mean, the first thing that they're doing to us is dividing us. I mean, it's being done in a very different ways. You know that uh, nowadays we are having this, let's say, hybrid wars. And a uh, couple of the most important fields of these wars are like media, uh, psychological war, basically, which we're seeing every day here but the most important thing that we figured out is to come together to basically to win this battle like you know unity versus uh, dividing so this battle suppose i mean we have to win this battle and only after this we can solve any of our problems i don't know if you're speaking of winning the war, technological development, economic development, I don't know, uh, even like a lot of people are uh, speaking about changing the government, I mean, you know, uh, finding our place in this uh, geopolitical changes and everything. So whatever you think of is possible to do. I mean, every problem, I mean, any problem is possible to solve if we are united. So what do you what do you understand when you say unity? Um, yeah, because like, yeah. a, a lot of people speak about it. It's almost like a, a metaphysical. Yes, uh, exactly, so exactly. What exactly is unity? Yeah, that's the most important point. So <laughs> what we did, we were thinking of okay, how we should be united uh, to be able to address these uh, challenges. So we're speaking of effective collaboration among Armenians and Armenian entities, uh, meaning that I mean, w- w- unity, not like we're g- uh, gathering together. Um, like, you know, in the streets, uh, having these camps or blocking the roads or having these parties or conferences, you know, whatever, uh, talking a lot together. All these things might be very good, very pleasant, but we have to de- deliver measurable results together. Like effective collaboration is the key of solving any big problem, any big uh, I mean, to meet any big challenge that we're facing huh, nowadays. So uh, this was the reason why we started Re-Armenia. In the beginning, this was basically a hypothesis in this uh, century of technologies, uh, especially a lot uh, of us, I mean, many of us are from technological uh, businesses and uh, tech backgrounds. So we were th- there was a hypothesis that uh, nowadays uh, using modern technologies, we can solve the problem of bringing Armenians together 
as it never uh, have been solved or even couldn't basically mm-hmm. been solved. Huh? So right after that, uh, we started these experiments. A lot of like dozens of Armenians uh, from very different fields came together, you know, starting from philanthropists, uh, like uh, people from NGO sector, business people, a lot of different Armenians came together. And in the first, uh, in the very first year, we had uh, the proof of this hypothesis because, you know, I mean, only uh, in, in the first year alone, uh, we uh, had 10,000 Armenians came together on Re Armenia platform. Uh, they have raised more than $1 million and uh, realized around 40 projects, successful projects. Like 20 of those projects were fundraising uh, campaigns for different causes. Uh, and uh, around 20 were collaboration campaigns because, you know, on our platform, uh, every project which is solving Armenia's or Armenians' problem is being presented. I mean, can be presented, let's say like this, because we're organizing this thorough due diligence for every project before presenting them on the platform. And they're uh, finding their necessary resources from all around the world, ma- mainly from Armenians. And when we're saying resources, we mean like knowledge, experience, network, funds, and tangible assets. Huh? So part Part of them were looking for funds who raised this $1 million, but the other part, they were looking for uh, experts, professionals, partners, uh, supporters in different fields. So what I'm trying to say that during in the f- during the first year, we saw that this is working. Today, it's already almost two years that the platform exists, and we already doubled all these numbers, like more than $2 million already raised. Uh, more than 80 projects we have already successful. By the way, just to have the understanding of this, uh, about 500 projects applied to Re-Armenia during these two years. And after due diligence, around 140 were presented on the platform, 80 were already successful. The others are still running their campaigns, raising funds and uh, looking for uh, partners. Uh, By the way, six projects were unsuccessful. I mean, uh, there were different uh, reasons for them to close or terminate the project but so that's the, more than 90 percent success yes yeah. yes that that's a that's a huge number truly saying huh? and also you know i mean these funds are being raised uh, from a lot of people together like for example we had this munk techno school in artsakh and 600 people together raised hundred and seventy thousand uh, dollars within two months uh, and, and also right now there is a project metagate uh, which is a technological solution for wounded uh, uh, soldiers. Uh, Yeah, and uh, they're raising around $200,000, out of which $140,000 already they have raised. And again, uh, I guess, if I'm not mistaken, more than 1,000 people, like, you know, people and organizations, starting from 500 drums, like, you know, $1, $2, uh, and, uh, you know, students and people, Uh, from schools are donating, ending up with big companies uh, who are donating several tens of thousands of dollars, basically, like $25,000, for example, from foundation, uh, it was Aurora Foundation, or uh, banks, for example, Evoca Bank, etc., etc. So, Arad Bank, it doesn't matter. The names are, by the way, the names means nothing here. The community means everything here, you know? This is a very important part of it. So, eventually, uh, right now, we already can tell that we have this proof of concept of coming together and effectively collaborating together. Huh? And now we want to spread the word about these opportunities, about these tools that we have created and basically tested already, and to bring uh, the rest of Armenian doers uh, on the platform. Mm-hmm. We, we usually say that this is a community of committed doers, mm-hmm. you know? And um, unfortunately... Uh, I mean, we, 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 you know, we are facing these disasters one after the other. Of course, this time, uh, like uh, re-Armenias and re-Armenian communities, uh, uh, response was a lot more effective uh, than before. But again, much uh, smaller results we had rather than we uh, would like to see. Because, you know, I mean, this is like the second year we're still developing and still bringing a lot of people together mm-hmm. and we're, we're gaining this trust i mean 
you know, not not as fast as we wanted to. But on the other hand, we understand what is the situation in uh, Armenian uh, communities overall. So so gaining back the trust towards, you know, uh, systems working in Armenia right. is really a hard task, but we're doing our best for that. Like all these due diligence processes, all these reporting processes. So, so you know, every project which is presented on Re-Armenia, besides uh, going through this thorough due diligence, I mean, we have this trust and safety department where we check their every project's legal and financial aspects. And then we have uh, advisory boards from different fields who are checking every project uh, from, I mean, uh, for, uh, from perspectives of problem solution and team we're seeing if there is a problem like that and if this solution good enough for that problem and if this team is capable to solve this problem so after all this due diligence they're being presented on the platform but after that every month they're presenting at least two reports one is financial report how much money they have raised from where and they way did they spend this money and the second is impact report or you should say uh, progress report so they're presenting videos photos uh, articles in media about them so uh, every donor and every community member can see what was the result uh, for this uh, period of time huh and this helps us to keep the highest level of transparency which is uh, the backbone of trust actually huh so anyways coming to these days um, again f- for example on re armenia right after uh, the start of uh, displacement process, uh, we have launched uh, the info page where all the initiatives were That's gathered right, yeah. together, like around uh, 200 initiatives who are solving very different problems for uh, displaced uh, Armenians from Artsakh. Uh, but also we uh, very quickly reorganized our due diligence process for the projects who are uh, you know addressing problems of displaced armenians so uh, we usually it was taking around a week this due diligence process if everything is ready with the project because you can see the projects who are passing this due diligence process for like three four months because uh, besides like checking uh, the mm-hmm. situation. Our advisors are helping a lot, uh, the initiator, initiators of these projects, like giving a lot of advices, how to improve the project, right. et cetera, et cetera. So if you're ready, if everything is okay with the project, usually it was taking around a week. But now we organized this um, urgent uh, due diligence track, let's say like this, express track, and within 24 hours, we're organizing thorough due diligence for every project, mm-hmm. which is... Uh, which aims uh, at, at uh, solving uh, the problem. So at the moment, uh, solving the problems of displaced. So at the moment, we have, I guess, more than seven projects on the platform. By the way, uh, we had uh, very interesting cases where uh, our Bay Area, like Armenians from United States, they came together and they decided to use Re-Armenia platform as a tool for their fundraiser, mm-hmm. which was... Uh, something new and uh, it went uh, very smooth i mean uh, we have that project already they have raised more than 20 or 30 thousand dollars already I, i'm not sure at the moment about the numbers but and and they're finding on one hand uh, the resources on the other hand uh, different uh, people in need are uh, having opportunity to apply through re armenia to them so i mean thanks god uh, all this uh, you know, tool set that we were developing during these two years is working. Right. You know, uh, and the last thing about what we are doing now, what we have on the platform today, but not least at all. So it is expert community. So we were, of course, uh, in terms of fundraising, uh, things went a lot easier because I'm from crowdfunding sphere. So we have very good friends uh, in Re Armenia who are from technological and financial spheres so uh, very fast we organized the, the best and easiest tool set for fundraising but what comes to uh, when it comes to collaboration we had really hard time there huh so we were trying to develop different tools we were trying to integrate some ideas frameworks or other tools but we we were not uh, very successful till we have developed this expert community tool so for you to understand in one quarter, we had more uh, collaboration cases, uh, 
matches basically among initiators and experts uh, more than we had uh, during the whole year before this tool with all the other tools and uh, I mean uh, test test this. Can you just explain what the tool is exactly? Yeah, so uh, actually every Armenian from uh, anywhere can register on Re Armenia platform as an expert because you know everyone has some expertise. So, and uh, w- what they're doing, they're giving their name, their expertise, uh, fields of interest uh, in which fields uh, they would like to see project. I mean, to help the project, and uh, the time basically. Uh, how much time do they have during a week so they can volunteer and support Armenian projects? Right after that. Uh, the expert card is being presented on the platform uh, with the button which says connect and any initiative from Armenia who's looking for knowledge experience or network uh, among diasporas uh, among diaspora so they they are just uh, hitting this button uh, telling uh, very in short the, the, their story like this is what I'm doing and this is the need I mean uh, the help I need And experts already getting these emails and choosing among those uh, initiatives which one is most interesting for them uh, and uh, confirming uh, this initiative and starting this collaboration. Of course, we're organizing the moderation process uh, to uh, filter all the uh, inquiries or, let's say, applications that experts are getting, not uh, to spam them, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, But but the, the main idea is that it's very easy first step basically to right. engage with Armenia. They're sitting in their comfort zone, in their like cities, in their in, in their home, uh, sharing basically the information and knowledge that they already have. They do not have to spend uh, uh, extra time for that. Huh? So they're sharing their uh, own experience. Uh, during the time that they have specified, their free time, and sharing with the projects which are selected by themselves. Right. I mean, it's not like you're giving your time or money to some organization which later will decide uh, who will be the beneficiary. So you are choosing your beneficiary. Mm-hmm. So this is actually a very easy way to share your knowledge, experience, and network with the projects um, which are solving Arme- Ar- Armenia's problems. Right. And, and there is a second uh, very interesting benefit that uh, thanks to this process, they're getting to know Uh, the people in Armenia who are basically change makers. Right. Before this, uh, usually our diaspora and Armenians are dealing with their relatives who are sitting there and asking for money and saying how bad everything is in Armenia, etc., etc. So uh, the the, perspe- the the perception about Armenia was totally different. And now, when you deal with people who are really so, like finding the problem, solving mm-hmm. the problems, who are basically developing Armenia. So you are getting a totally different understanding of Armenia. Right. And you're making friends uh, and then, you know, uh, involving into the projects deeper and deeper. Eventually, we, we by the way, uh, this summer we had already the first case of repatriation, thanks to the Armenian oh, process. Huh? Yeah, so what I'm trying to say that this is a great... Uh, environment to find, uh, I mean, where these committee doers can find each other right, right. from diaspora and from Armenia. Yeah. So on the podcast, we uh, the main topic that we, we discuss every week is um, the startup ecosystem, right? And throughout these last almost two years now of, of podcasts, one of the recurring themes has been that in the earlier days of Armenia's tech ecosystem, a lot of the the sort of framework that was laid upon for which later on the successful startups came to be um, was a result of really effective uh, Armenia diaspora collaboration. So initiatives like High Tech, uh, AESA, and and others um, really came together to build some of the some of the infrastructure that needed to be, including even like venture firms and stuff um, that needed to exist in order for Armenia to have startups. A message that often gets not how should I say it, like not broadcasted enough or properly to our diaspora communities is that ways to engage with Armenia don't need to only be those traditional ways that we've been taught all our lives, which is like charity or going to like some marches or rallies and stuff. But there are people in Armenia that are trying to do these really meaningful projects that contribute to the building of the of the state. And there are people with significant expertise in the diaspora that that those expertise need to be treated as a resource and utilized for for the development of, of Armenia. Um, and it's a shame that that's not, that hasn't been tapped into uh, as much as it could have been, I think, for 
over the last few decades. And so now Ria Armenia is is one of those those places where people can do that. Can you give us some examples of successful collaboration from the expertise sharing side? Um, yeah, not I, just I can give you a brilliant example of ourselves basically because you know uh, we were testing uh, this tool on us as well so for example uh, we have a great friend uh, she's uh, she, she don't like when we sh- when we say she's from Sri Lanka <laughs> because she moved to Sri Lanka right. of course from Armenia she she, she uh, was born here and then she uh, studied and worked in United States and then she moved uh, to Sri Lanka uh, so her name is Magda. She was working in IBM. He's a top uh, data analyst, uh, actually. And we were thinking how to organize our data in Ria Armenia because we're collecting a lot of data while, uh, and during the due diligence process and then during the campaigns that the projects are running. Huh? And how to collect this data, structure this data and make our decisions uh, data driven, basically, uh, to be as effective as possible. And we were looking, for, of course, uh, we as a nonprofit, uh, unfortunately, do not have enough uh, funds to hire the best. But then we figured out, okay, so we have this tool. Let us use this tool first. And we uh, got in touch with uh, Magda, and she helped us a lot. I mean, uh, approximately four or five months, if I'm not mistaken, she was working with us and remotely. And and when she's in Armenia, so we had these uh, meetings, very productive meetings. And now... We are collecting all the data that we can yeah. uh, in, in the platform and every next uh, decision is made based on that data. And she continues basically, uh, let's say, mentoring us on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, what is important uh, in this process? Uh, we learned basically how to utilize this senior volunteer time huh? right, right. because we didn't know that as well. I mean, we didn't have this uh, experience. So how to connect with her, how to treat her feedbacks, how to, I mean, what, what's supposed to be the infrastructure of our communications and also the appreciation part is very important. The re- reporting part is very important. So, you know, she always wanted to see what was the result of uh, the spent time by her, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Huh? So, uh, and as soon as we learned all these things, now we are creating the training, uh, let's say, process uh, to help with these other initiatives, right. uh, initiators, you know, mm-hmm. because uh, we, we see there is a great guy who can help with a great knowledge and experience. And here is a great initiative, very ent- enthusiastic people here. But There is a huge difference among cultures. I mean, usually you're having these cultural clashes Mm -hmm. while trying to bring these people together. Uh, And then we have this this disattachment, I might say, uh, because of these uh, tools. uh, I mean, you know, uh, the way they treat each other, etc. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to gather all this information. We're organizing, by the way, deep interviews with every initiator and every expert after their collaboration, uh, you know, uh, experiences. Huh? To understand. Yes, to learn. understand all the pros and cons and the mainly cons. I mean, mainly the problems. We want to raise the problems to find the solutions to them. And then we're sharing uh, all these uh, ideas about the solutions with the others. So every uh, next, basically, collaboration is more effective because we're diving deep into mm-hmm. uh, the anato- anatomy, basically, of this collaboration. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there are several uh, very successful cases already. I, I was telling about ours uh, because uh, I know this uh, from depth. Uh, yeah, anyways. And um, so we, we didn't do, by the way, any uh, marketing, I mean, any communications for this tool. Huh? And uh, organically, we had more than 150 experts already registered on the platform. We had around like 200 different uh, applications of initiatives. I I know that about 40, 50 uh, successful collaborations we already had Mm -hmm. during this time. So, and now, I mean, with this visit to United States that we will have and with all the communication campaigns that we're planning to start, we want to spread like information about this tool and invite uh, all the Ar- or every Armenian who is basically uh, eager to 
change something in Armenia, to be registered here, to find other like-minded Armenians and to start this Mm co-creation process, collaboration process Mm -hmm. together. So this is Mm -hmm. kind of next step uh, Mm -hmm. as we understand for our nation. Tell us the upcoming dates of the of your tour around the United States, where you'll be presenting the. Ah uh, yes, uh, so so from uh, October twentieth, I will be in LA uh, till the end of October thirty first, and then um, we will uh, have a couple of days in San Jose. But what are the days of the events? Uh, in events LA, in LA, yeah. Oh, in LA, uh, we have uh, uh, in Hero House. Uh, 25th of October, it will be a public event. But we decided to have this format, to have a public event, I mean, maybe 100 and 150 people, maybe not more, uh, where we will be presenting uh, three main things, uh, the situation in Armenia at the moment, uh, the Re-Armenia platform with all these tools, and some of the projects presented on Re-Armenia, which are addressing very like crucial problems uh, regarding 100,000 plus uh, displaced Armenians uh, today. And after that, we will have this uh, Q&A session where basically our attendees can ask any question, even not regarding with uh, with the presentation that we have presented. Right after that, we are planning to have these follow-up meetings with the uh, people who are kind of committed doers and they want to start doing something like register as an expert to support any project, to fund any project or to find uh, some people in Armenia uh, because a lot of diasporans have uh, their own ideas what we should do here, but they do not have hands here, you mm-hmm. know, to, or, to, to realize those ideas. So they might uh, need uh, some experts and partners in Armenia. So we're helping them with this as well. So uh, and then uh, in, in the same hero house, uh, guys are providing us with uh, the conference room. So during all these days, we will have that room. For private uh, meetings. Like yeah, for meetings. private meetings, uh, up to five, six people at a time. And also can, we can have like one-on-one meetings where we will be already talking the real uh, job, basically, or, or we will be talking about uh, the real actions that we will be taking together uh, to have this impact. So the same format we will be uh, keeping for other cities. We will be in uh, San Jose, uh, San Francisco, Las Vegas, uh, and then East Coast, uh, Boston, New York, Washington, D.C. And also right now we're talking about uh, Detroit. Uh, so maybe we will be in Michigan as well. Uh, but uh, these six cities that I have uh, mentioned are uh, for sure already. Mm-hmm. By the way, we're, we're uh, sharing uh, the itinerary. So if you don't mind, maybe we can share this, our sure. itinerary through your network as well. For sure, yeah. Yeah, we'll put the link, and people in those cities should, uh, uh-huh. should make an Thank effort to, much, to, yeah. go, to. We go have this and registration link, and you're uh, while registering, you're saying in which city you want to attend, and we're sending the agendas and the dates mm. uh, for those cities. Fantastic. My last question, Gilbert. Um A couple months ago, actually, maybe longer now, I was at one of your talks, and you said something interesting. You said before, so you've started a number of really successful businesses, in the, in the tech space mostly with like large valuations and things. And you said that back then you thought that by doing that, you would solve a lot of problems for Armenia. And then you came to a realization that that wasn't enough. Can you expand on that a little bit and say what you what you think the tech community should instead be, or maybe not instead, but in addition to that, be, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. be focused on to making actual meaningful change for the state? Yes, the idea was that we were thinking of creating a big uh, multi-billion dollar company, which will be affecting Armenian... Uh, economic, I mean, uh, um, economy overall yeah. in Armenia. And also we will uh, have effect on uh, other fields as well. But during the war, we understood that there are a lot of uh, like very big companies starting from, I don't know, Pixar with their $2 billion valuation, a service titan like 15, 16 billion at that time. You know, I mean, um, this uh, solo learn crisp etc uh, etc et with several hundred our our startup uh, i mean our company uh, several like 40 million dollars uh, of valuation approximately uh, our group of companies it's etc cetera, etc cetera. so but we had what we had during the war and we were thinking okay so imagine that there is another 1 billion dollar company or whatever so it wouldn't make any change and why because these entities, and not only these, are working like divided 
They are mm. not bringing their knowledge, experience, networks, funds uh, together, and we do not have this multi m- multiplying effect. This, um, you know what I'm saying? Like when, a catalyst. When, yeah. yeah, the catalyst. We do not have that. So we understood that this is the problem. I mean, there are a lot of companies out there, a lot of entities, and what we need to do, we need to bring them together, not to create another one, but to bring the existing entities together huh and that's why we started uh, re armenia basically truly saying within re armenia we, we we started another startup <laughs> 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 but we, of, of course uh, the success of this one uh, will be covering all the expenses of re armenia this is one of the directions that we have taken for uh, re armenia self sustainability so what is this the technology of re armenia white label yeah, yeah this is a great technology yeah. it turned out that a lot of people want to use yeah. this under their brands i mean uh, in around the world huh so we we already have two paying customers Fantastic. for this so we are providing re armenia's uh, technology as a white label solution uh, to very different companies who want to run their own platform of Uh, crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, collaboration, or crowd investments. If if you are doesn't matter. For, for example, you're a university and you want to have your own platform to bring your community there to raise funds from your alumni for your uh, endowment funds, or you want to uh, give opportunity to your students to raise funds for their projects on your own platform, or you want to have this expert community uh, from your you know alumni and uh, and like. Uh, uh mentors uh coaches etc cetera, etc cetera. so you want to do all these things under your brand on your own platform mm-hmm. but you do not have enough technological you know uh, capacities huh? mm-hmm. especially this is about mid level universities let's right. say like this right. uh, like second third tier universities uh and what you do here you're just paying license fee monthly it's like uh, around $3000 which is basically salary of one uh, mid level programmer actually mm-hmm. huh? and you are having a technological partner with very sophisticated like platform and it's very proven. agile and uh, let's say modular mo- mo- yeah. yeah it is modular mm-hmm. and it can be tailor made to uh, to your uh, like needs uh, and mm. uh, you know problems. So, this is a great opportunity for this kind of mm-hmm. uh, companies. Uh, first, of course, we we didn't want to go there because, you know, we have our mission which says re Armenia. I mean, we empower and unite Armenians to become a caring and collaborative community. Yeah? So, this is our mission. And uh, when you're selling your product uh, to US, to Brazil or to Europe, for example, I mean, you're kind of going out mm-hmm. from your mission. And then we found a solution. So, we Uh, find uh, we found a partner who's basically responsible for marketing sales and customer support and the only thing which we are doing here providing. is providing the technology and uh, we have this great uh, way of working with programmers so we have this task based management system and we don't even uh, like utilize our own team of five people who are working on re armenia uh, for uh like uh, servicing new partners or mm-hmm. new new clients here mm-hmm. right. so this is a great thing i mean our uh, entrepreneurial mindset basically helped a lot to, to solve the issue uh, yeah, yeah to package our technology as a product right. and to sell this right. uh, and also you know our big vision was uh, to help the humanity to become collaborative versus competitive not only armenians right. i mean this is our primary goal to bring armenians together to help them in this i mean to create effective collaboration framework and effective collaboration tool set for armenians but also we want to share this with uh, with the rest of the world you know sure. and this is an opportunity for that right yeah and and, and you were asking about artsakh just a couple of words i mean it's uh, I, i i moved to artsakh last summer but the thing is the problem is that i came back for three days yeah uh, i remember yeah. a day before uh, blockade started yeah. you know and my i mean car is there the home a lot of things uh, basically left there because the car uh, which, which i was using were was very small one and i'm and i was coming to take my whole family of nine people yeah. uh, to artsakh so we can we can celebrate like new year together and and that was kind of one of the devastating parts of this whole story i mean th- of course uh, we lost not lost but temporarily let's say how lost a lot more uh, but when you uh, zoom in uh, to the personal stories of everybody who were 
attached mm-hmm. or you know connected somehow with Artsakh. There are a lot of uh, small and medium dramas uh, which are basically changing uh, the psychological situation of the nation overall. You know. By the way, uh, when when I was speaking about the projects which are addressing uh, crucial problems, uh, one of those projects is uh, psychological aid uh, Mm -hmm. for these 100,000 displaced people. And this is a very important thing. I mean, all of us right now have to work uh, like hard on this uh, integration process. I mean, we, we do not... Uh, allowed basically to fail this integration process of these 100,000 Armenians in Republic of Armenia because, you know, uh, the risk of having another, uh, you know, portion of migration is very big. Yeah. We truly saying, uh, all of us, first of all, me, for example, how we have failed uh, the first wave coming from Iraq and the second from Syria and the third from Lib- Lebanon and even the fourth from Russia and Ukraine. And now we're about... Even before that, Baku. And uh, yeah, Baku yeah, and yeah, that, that yeah. was e- even er- earlier. But And we're about to fail the fifth one, which was which, which will be like v- a huge shame for all of us. So a massive what loss, I, w- yeah. The message I wanted to um, I mean, deliver with this, that I would love to see every Armenian like laser focused on this problem to do whatever we can to organize this uh, happy, effective life of every Armenian from Artsakh in Republic of Armenia. So this integration problem is the number one problem that we have today and and we have to solve it together. Yeah, I I completely agree. And we need serious leadership, both at the the state level, but also from industries and and people with influence in the country to to really initiate. Yes, state alone can't handle that. Just, you know, I mean... Because it's uh, at the end of the day, integration into society revol- involves society's buy-in. Yes, so yes, I, exactly, I agree, yeah. exactly. Um, Gilbert, thank you so much for for being with us. I wish you a successful trip to the U.S. I hope you get a lot of new export experts onboarded, and I hope Re-Armenia's mission uh, continues. Thank you, Gilbert. Thank you very, very much for having thank you, me. Gilbert.